it's Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. I have had a very stressful day, so I'm super excited to talk about some books. This is going to be my October wrap up, what I'm currently reading, and to give you an idea of what I will be reading in November. So let's get started. I read, I have my laptop over here, so yeah. I read nine books in October, which isn't super good for me, but I went on vacation, so I'm just gonna blame it on vacation. The first book that I read was Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. I gave this two stars. This was a story about a girl, Hermione, who was raped at cheer camp. And it's not necessarily about the rape, which I guess is good. Like I understand what E.K. Johnston was trying to do with this story. She was making it mostly about Hermione and cheerleading, not about the rape. And I actually liked that side, how life just goes on after someone is raped, but I felt very disconnected from Hermione, Her Hermione the whole time, just because she never really dealt with being raped. It was just mostly about cheerleading. There were some scenes with her psychologist, but that was it. And for me, it didn't feel real. It didn't feel like... A real person who was raped so I gave this two stars I also read it like right during the whole Brett Kavanaugh bullshit so maybe that didn't help either I sincerely don't know but I didn't like this one so okay the next book that I read started my October TBR like officially and I did really well with my October TBR this time like I normally am like yeah TBR and then I never follow it but this time I did and I think I only didn't read like two books on my TBR which to be honest is really good so the first book that I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers I loved this book I took everyone's advice and listened to the audiobook as I read the book at the same time, and I've never done that before, and I really liked it. So this tells the story of Sadie. Sadie goes on a mission to find her sister's murderer, but it's also told in the perspective of a podcast, which I thought was super interesting, and I'm so glad I listened to it. So it's kind of like a puzzle. The The two stories eventually do sort of meet up but the ending is very open-ended which I liked a lot like in my opinion I think I know what happens but it might be someone else's like someone else's opinion might be totally different from mine and I really like how Courtney Summers did that so I gave Sadie five stars it was my first five star read of October if you haven't please read the audiobook it was it was just this was great. I'm so glad. I got it in a book box subscription and it's I think it's the first book that I've actually liked from book box subscription. So this was great. It deserves the hype it's getting. It does have trigger warnings, pedophilia, murder. It's not pretty. It's not a pretty story, but it's necessary. I thought it was so good. Listen to the audiobook. The next book that I read was The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I surprisingly loved this book. I do not like the hate to love trope, but it was so cute and it was so good. And Lucy and Josh were everything. And yeah, so this is a story about a comp two companies who have merged together and now these two, Lucy and Josh, have the same job for their bosses they're like assistants and they hate each other but it soon turns to love and it's just so good and it was such a fast read i enjoyed my whole reading experience with this book i got it out from the library and then i actually had to buy it because i just wanted it on my shelf i want to read it again i want to not have to worry about being out at the library i just want to reread it whenever so I also want to mention my friend Rachel. She was like, "Oh, you're I you're going to love it." And I did love it. I'm I'm so glad I loved it, Rachel. And I want to thank Chelsea for mentioning this book in like all her videos because 
it was a good one. I gave this one five stars. So I had two five star reads in a row. That like never happens to me. The next book that I read for my October CBR was Friend Request by Laura Marshall. I gave this book two and a half stars. I didn't DNF it though. That is amazing. So this is set somewhere in England. I don't know. But this woman, whose name I forget because I didn't like the story that much, receives a friend request from a woman who died 25 years ago. And obviously she is shook because what the fuck? And so she goes and tries to find if this woman is still alive and creepy things start happening to her and there's this whole big thing with her ex-husband and the reason I didn't like it is because it was fucking boring. It was slow. Like it was just all angsty about her ex-husband and her child and maybe because I don't have an ex-husband or a child it just like I didn't care. It was too slow. And then when the ending stuff happened, I was like, <sighs> okay. So I gave this one two and a half stars. My other thing is when is Goodreads going to give us half star options because, okay. The next book was Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I have a whole, what's that called? A weekend reading blog that I will maybe try to put up here. But more than likely, I'll put it down here because I don't know how to put it up here. Either way, I read Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This was recommended by Sarah without an H, and it's like one of her favorite books. However, I gave it three stars. This book is 600 pages. It's just, it was, fuck, it was too much. It was a lot. Also, I was really into it and then I was so bored and then I was really into it again and then the ending was open-ended a lot like Sadie was but I just like wasn't impressed I was just like really so basically this story is about a girl whose name I forget I'm really I should get better at that but whatever she is, commits suicide and uh, and she is the daughter of a famous, notorious night film director, so he makes really creepy movies, and she commits suicide. So this reporter thinks that there's more to that story, that maybe she was murdered, so he goes on this, like, wild goose chase with two other people to find out the truth, and then you find the out the truth and then there's another thing that happens at the end and I just wasn't super impressed maybe because it was so long maybe because there were parts that were so fucking boring and it just needed to be like 200 pages shorter I don't know three stars okay the next book that I read for that weekend reading vlog was The Darkest Corners by Kara Thomas I almost did enough this I was so close to DNFing this and I was listening to an audiobook and I was listening to it at like 2.5 speed because once again it was boring I uh, read the cheerleaders earlier this year by Kara Thomas and I mentioned this in my vlog but she does this thing where when everything is revealed it's very like swept under the rug it's not like a huge big reveal like I feel like it should be it should be like trumpets and like oh my god what is happening and like yeah and it's just like so this is the result and that's it and that's the end of the story and I what like if you're gonna do a thriller have it be thrilling so I gave this two stars and that's how I feel about that so the next book that I read, because I was supposed to see the movie and I haven't seen the movie because I suck as a person, is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I already read this book last year, but I went in to reread it before I saw the movie and I reread it in like three days and it was amazing. It was just as amazing as when I read it the first time a year ago. There were things that I somehow forgot had happened and it like... If you haven't read this book yet, I don't know what you're doing, so please read it. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I plan on doing that soon. And I... five stars, obviously. Five stars. 
The next book that I attempted to read and ultimately DNF'd because I always DNF and I finally DNF'd a book is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I listened to this on audiobook and I didn't love it. And I think I got 80 pages in and normally I try to get to 100 pages in before I DNF a book but that didn't happen this time. So ultimately it's just not for me. I don't know what it's about. I got 80 pages in and I was just bored and it's another 600 page book and I'm just not going to put myself through another 600 page book if it's going to be mediocre and that's how I feel about that. So. And finally, I went on vacation and I brought four books and I bought like five books and I only read one freaking book, but it was a great book. So that's all that matters. I read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This is the brother of John Green, our YA person. And I loved this book. I gave it four stars. A lot of people that I know and trust have been giving it five stars and I honestly believe I would have given it five stars if this was a book I just sat down and read. But since I was on vacation, I would read little bits here and there and I didn't get like a coherent flow at any really big point in time. So it's just something that I want to reread. That ending was so good. This whole book was so good. How do I describe what happens without being so spoilery? Basically, this girl named April May finds this statue at three o'clock in the morning in New York and uploads a video to YouTube and the video goes viral and she becomes like an instant social media star. But then things start to happen with these statues. To not get so spoilery, I'll stop there, but it was not at all what I expected it to be, and I loved it so much for that. This is also going to be a series or a duology, something, I don't know. I know there's definitely going to be another book, and I have no idea where it's going to go after that ending, and I'm very excited for it. I gave this four stars. I sincerely feel like I would have given it five stars if I had read it, like, front to back, one sitting, but that's just not how it went. So four stars, very excited to see what happens next. I really love this. Give it a shot. I know like John Green, how people feel about him. I don't mind him. I like turtles all the way down. I thought that this was very well written and it's adult, but it doesn't read like an adult. April, May is 23. So she's not like super adult. Like I'm 28 and I don't consider myself super adult either. So give it a chance. Four stars, very good. Ooh. So that's everything that I read in October. Currently, what am I reading? I don't know. I'm reading so many things, but like actually not reading anything because I'm doing NaNoWriMo and it is just a thing. So I am reading an arc of Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. She wrote One of Us is Lying, which I really liked. I'm also reading Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. That is her first book. It's the only book I haven't read by her yet. I'm like halfway through. I'm also, for some reason, listening to the audiobook of Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. I was watching videos of Casey Anonso and she loves Hush Hush and I read it and I liked it too and it gets some shit on booktube, so whatever. I am also finally Still rereading Unravel Me by Tahara Mafi. I'll finish it eventually. I feel like this reread was a bad idea and I might just stop and go to Restore Me and just be done with it. So I don't know. Okay. So for November, I have decided, because I hate myself, I guess, to try to at least read 100 pages of all the stupid fucking fantasy on my shelves. There's a lot of it. If you know me, you know that I don't like fantasy. So I'm trying to see if I like some fantasy, if it's me, I don't know, or to see if I just want to unhaul them and just be like, no, I'm an exclusive contemporary mystery person and fuck fantasy. So that's what I am going to attempt to do. It might put me in the biggest book slump of my life, 
but I'm willing to take the risk. So, those are my plans for November. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. I don't know how that's going to go. Even though I'm like, everything I'm reading right now is not at all fantasy. So I should get on that. Either way, thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video.